Well, good morning to boys and staff at college and at prep, parents who join us. Lovely to be with you. It's Thursday. It's our Thursday chapel service. And wow, isn't it cold here in Grahamstown? I don't know where you are, how cold it is. Very cold here. We've had some good rain. So it's a, it's a beautiful day in the sense, because it is beautiful, because the Lord made it. Let's just bow our heads as we, as we pray together. Father God, thank you for a beautiful day. Thank you for the privilege of sharing in these few moments together. I pray that together we will meet you, experience, experience you, Lord, and know your grace and love in this place and for us today. I ask for your blessing on the boys, the staff, the parents, and myself as we share these moments together. And Lord, I pray this all with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, boys and staff, I'd like you to join with me in the service today. And as always, we're going to start with a, a beautiful little worship song. And I, well, what I want to share today particularly is that we remember who we are. Remember who we are before the Lord. Remember whose we are, and thereby know who we are. This song is a beautiful song, a hill song, which speaks to this truth.
Father God, we thank you today for that tremendous knowledge for us, for those of us who know you as Savior and Lord, that we are your children, that we are loved by you. And that's what defines us. Thank you, Lord, that we are not defined by the things we do, Lord, or the things we don't do, or by our pedigree, or what we've achieved or not, but we are defined by the knowledge of you, Lord, by your love for us, by your belief in us, by the fact that you've chosen us and called us. And we thank you. And as we read your word, I ask that you speak to us now in Jesus' name. Amen. The text I want to use for my sharing today, this Thursday, this cold Thursday, is from John's epistle, chapter 3, verse 1 to 3, a beautiful little passage. He writes, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that they did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been known or been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. And so, boys and staff and parents who join us today, one of the, the phrases that the boys will know I often use with them is one that has always been close to my heart because my dad always reminded me, often when he was correcting me or scolding me, just those simple phrase, remember who you are. Don't forget where you've come from. Don't forget what you've been taught. Don't forget how you've been shaped and formed. And so from The Lion King, one of my favorite movies that I used to spend a lot of time watching with my children, there was this beautiful particular scene which I want to share with you today. Boy. Bye. Hey, wait. You know my father? Correction, I know your father. I hate to tell you this, but he died. A long time ago. Nope. Wrong again. <laughs> He's alive. And I'll show him to you. You follow old Rafiki. He knows the way. Come on. Don't dawdle. Hurry up. Whoa, wait, wait. Come on. Come on. Would you slow down? my reflection. No. Look hard. You see, he lives in you.
most wonderful scene in the movie. I'm sorry if it wasn't that clear, but maybe it'll make you go back and watch that old movie. But it's very powerful because Simba had to be, had to be reminded by his father to remember who he was, to remember that he, the father, lived in his son and, and what he had been taught. And so today for us simile, the word remember is very important. Never forget, remember who you are. What we believe gets woven into the fabric of our minds. My sense for you to say it is, don't forget what you've been taught and what you've believed, what you've based your life on. Our beliefs are very important to us. For example, Romans 8 verse 1, it says, there is no condemnation for those who are in Jesus. John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. And John 1 verse 12 says, yet to all who received him, and believed on his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So remember that, that when you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, he makes you his child, and there is no more condemnation, and he removes from you that judgment of sin. So remember that when you give your life to Christ. That's important for us as Christians. The second thing is, remember this, the values that you keep or that you choose shape your life. And, and in Deuteronomy, and in, from Exodus and Deuteronomy particularly, we remember how Moses constantly had to remind the people and say, remember that you are God's people. Remember that he is your God. You should have no other gods. Remember that you are to honor him, to honor your families, that you are to honor each other, to honor those who serve and work for you and various other things. And he said, you have to decide all the time. Remember who you are. Choose whom you will serve. Choose the values. Choose them well. Don't forget them because it shapes your life. And it defines who you are. And I want to remind you of that today as well. And thirdly today, to remember that the company that you and I keep. So remember, the first thing is to remember what you believe. Because your, your beliefs define your life. Secondly, remember the, 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 the values because they shape who you are. But choose your company well. Because you know that phrase. You become who you are with. 1 Corinthians 15, 13 says... Bad company corrupts good character. This is nothing new. I've shared it with you before. But I want to remind you of it to say to you, your beliefs are important. Your values are important. The company you keep is important. And finally, if I summarize it all together and what I want to share with you, to you today is define your world. Remember, you need to define your world or the world will define you. And that's why it's important for you to decide what is it that I believe? What are the values of my life? Who is my God? Who do I trust in? Who is my Savior? Who are my friends? Where do I want to spend my time with? Where do I want to invest my time and my energy in my life? Who do I want to keep as the center of my life? Because whatever you do will define your world. Okay, so that defines your world. Because if not, others will put their beliefs into you, upon you. Others will try to convince you to share their values, their priorities, and soon you'll find you'll become what others want you to be. So may I leave that thought with you. Define your world. Define who you are, or the world will define you. Let's pray together. Father God, I know what I've shared is nothing new for the boys and staff and the parents, but I pray that it is just a gentle reminder to us. Give us grace, Lord, and I pray over lockdown, especially we've had the opportunity to, to go back and look and say, who am I? What is it that I believe? What is important to me? What are the values that I hold dear? Is Jesus my Lord and Savior? Is his word the truth that I build my life on? Is he the one I want to follow? And is his people the people I want to be with? Or is it something else? And so, Lord, I pray for grace and for courage and strength for the boys, the staff, and the parents to make good choices, to make good choices. And I pray that we learn the lesson that Simba had to learn, Lord, that we never forget who we are, how we've been raised, the values and beliefs that have been imparted to us, that we have grown. And I pray, Lord Jesus, for courage for us to take charge in a sense, Lord, and to define our world, Lord, lest the world defines us. I thank you, Lord, and I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, boys and staff, parents, lovely to have shared these few moments with you today. I look forward to sharing my final service with you on Sunday. So until then, have a wonderful day.
and our most blessed rest of the week.